I know a lot of times people search for information on their own investments. In the case of physical silver, or even if you have phys uh, physical silver stored in an ETF, which some people say that's not physical silver, but I have both, mainly physical silver. Um, I know they're all looking for information, and I know there's plenty of people that want to provide that information, but a lot of times I've been realizing the answers are a lot more simple than people are trying to read into things. Uh, there are people that tend to be very heavy onto the conspiracy side of everything, and actually in businesses, things go along like that all the time. It's just like that everywhere. People do collude together for their own self-benefit, but it's not anywhere near as some of the uh, media experts. <laughs> I guess that's what they are. They're marketing experts always looking for a conspiracy because people love a juicy story. You know, it's like yellow journalism to the max. But the markets aren't as totally rigged as people think they are. Now, what's going on is basically, you know, obviously it's a downturn. And uh, what's going on, though, is what we can expect for certain is if it gets really out of hand where things are unwinding, say Dow goes below 11,000 or something like that, Ben Bernanke is going to act, and he's going to act hard. That's his personality. Um, I would request that people into the silver and gold market don't say much and don't criticize the guy. Let him do his thing because your assets are going to go up faster. It's going to be one of the fastest growing assets groups going. Precious metals, it's going to fly. Now, not only is silver down this, you know, for 2012, also platinum and palladium. Now, I want to point out both platinum and palladium um, have had record demand usage in 2011. And also, they expected to have record demand usage past 2011 in uh, 2012. This will be a new record year. They had they, they could not meet demand in 2011, both those metals. On, in the case of palladium, they had to pull out of Russian stockpiles massive amounts. And in the case of platinum, they had to pull out massive uh, part, amounts of, uh, from South African stockpiles for the case of platinum. And they had you know stoppages and stuff like that in the mining major stoppages where they lost a lot of production this year in 2012 yet the metals are down so so much for you know the markets are not reacting to physical buying and selling that goes for palladium and platinum too same like silver but you see I, my point is you don't see JP Morgan you know being accused of shorting palladium and platinum and actually in reality the palladium market so small if people bought some of that, they could move that market a lot easier than silver. You know, it really could be moved a lot. But uh, it's just a, that's just a, something I want to point out that uh, you're not getting a whole story on things. I'm a little, sus well, I'm major suspicious of a lot of things, but I'm not going to make any accusations about anything. But I want to actually display some things. This was an excellent article. It's older article. It's like a year and a half old, October 28, 2010. Is Russia Today, in other words, a media outlet, controlled opposition? This was appeared on HenryMarco.com. He's like alternative media and... <laughs> He's all right. I mean, it's like it's a mixed bag. I mean, I like alternative. He's he's sort of like in conflict with uh, Jeff Rents and David Ick too, um, and it brings out some of the stuff against these people that are not really all saints in the alternative media. But I found this a very good revealing story, and this this is my opinion too. I I agree with the author David Richards. I'm going to post in my reference of where this is coming from. As incredible as it sounds, the largest out the biggest outlet for the Patriot movement right now is Russia State Television. That's Russia State Television. Now Russia today is controlled by basically the former KGB or the FSS, the Federal Security Service. It's like saying CIA today USA and a bunch of people getting on board and going, oh yeah that's great. Well, that's almost like what you're doing, except CIA, if you had CIA today, USA, they would at least be on this side of, you know, for this nation. 
in the case of Russia today, they can care less about the survival of the West. They're playing games with you people, and uh, you don't see it, I'm telling you right now. But I want to point out, you'll find that a lot of the people that are criticizing the banksters left and right are on this stuff. Now, in a lot of ways, I'm kind of used to dealing with the mentality of the so-called banker mentality, whatever hell you want to call it, because the name of the game is making money. Okay, I mean, you know, that's the whole game. Um, so, you know, I don't really see nothing wrong with that. I know you talk about the ethics and stuff like that, but in the case of Russia, I mean, Putin is probably the biggest criminal in the world that gets away with everything. I think his wealth actually is probably over fifty billion dollars like some people are estimating on the internet. I don't think that's just a bunch of talk. He does have interest in all these different um, oil companies, even though you can't prove it. Have fun trying to prove it. <laughs> You'd be dead. But, um, you know, Russia today is not... Well, look, Russia today, like I said, it's a state-owned operation. And the state is the biggest... The real people that control the state of Russia are like a major super organized crime unit basically but the state is the organized crime in this case so it's a lot worse there in a lot of ways than what's going on in the United States they're playing a game with you but I want to point out who actually shows up on here a hell of a lot a lot of the constant content focuses on financial scandal and imminent collapse of the US financial system now how long have you seen this theme been played out the sky's gonna fall the sky's gonna fall Russia Today pushes this left and right. This is epitomized in Russia Today flagship show, The Kaiser Report, featuring Max Kaiser. Max is very well versed in financial scams ripping the USA apart and explains it in a concise and entertaining way. But he only goes so far blaming the problem on the greed of Wall Street and individuals like Secretary St Secretary. Treasury, uh, Treasury Secretary Timmy Geithner. He accuses the Wall Street piranhas of not caring about global warming. I know he's into that garbage too. And, you know, something about this whole deal doesn't sit right with me. And I don't know, this might be lengthy, but pay attention because if you're not, if you're somebody that bought into the physical silver sink JP Morgan deal, um, that never sat right with me <laughs> exactly and I just thought what I thought silver was going to go off for us because they're going to keep printing money keep printing money well Mark Farber says that basically too so I mean I think it's the, the basic trend is not going to go away it's going to keep going up but not what a lot of these uh, alternative media pundits are saying there's a, there's like some garbage mixed in here that I really does not sit right with me and um you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think there's some others more games going on than people really suspect. Um, and it goes on to say what RT won't tell you, and this is an important point. This is something I've known for decades before RT was around, before the Soviet Union fell apart and everything. The idea that we live in a world of individual nation states is propaganda. For a long time, the world has been run by on an internationalist agenda moving towards world government. Many, at least 60 years, at least, with the U.S. and Russian elite working together. So what, this is basically can be considered controlled opposition. An example of this is how the ultra-powerful U.S. Rockefeller family were intimately involved with the Soviets. And actually, there's a lot of research going on with that. This is an interesting thing. From 1938, Trotsky said the New Deal signals the end of capitalism in the U.S. And actually, the New Deal was actually large parts of it were struck down by the Supreme Court. And of course, Roosevelt tried to pack the Supreme Court because he didn't like that. You know, the other, the check and balance of the our three branches of government, one of the branches was knocking down some of the laws. And actually, the president is not supposed to doesn't make the laws he's supposed to just enforce the laws but you could see how the whole game was going on um, this the 30s was basically a major push towards socialism and Trotsky goes on you will have a revolution a terrible revolution you see this is what they want this is not what happened but this is what they want 
And this is why I suspect RT highly I suspect because it seems plain and obvious, you know, to occupy Wall Street movement and everything. They want they want problems. They want problems to happen. So there's going to be a solution that's going to be introduced, coordinated with between both elites, the elite of the West and the elite of Russia. What course it takes, to, what course the revolution takes, it will depend much on what Mr. Rockefeller tells Mr. Haig to do. Mr. Rockefeller is a symbol of the American ruling caste, and Mr. Haig is a symbol of its political tools. The Rockefeller set up the Council on Foreign Relations. It's very good to read that magazine sometimes because you really know what's going on. And not everybody in the Council on Foreign Relations is some kind of insider elite looking to control the world. That's that's a myth, part. That's a myth. Not every member of the Council on Foreign Relations is a bad person in any way. But basically, it's, it's about um, they set the policy pretty much in the United States. Not well known, but they pretty much do set the policy in the United States. And in here it claims it acts as a shadow government in the U.S. Virtually every important player in politics and media is a member, including President Obama and George Bush Jr. That's probably much known, pretty much common knowledge now, but um, it's still worth mentioning. Now, I want to point out some other things. Now, Max Kaiser, I mentioned, he's on here a lot, the Kaiser Report, constantly criticizing the you know, the English aristocracy, the banksters, you know, everything, right? Now, I know a lot of that stuff's legitimate, but it's almost like, you know, who's doing the accusing? It's coming from Russia today. And I think they got some of the most uh, heinous oligarchs going. And I, I, don't have a, I don't have a very good opinion of Putin at all. I don't see, I know how he's playing that game. God, that guy's slick. He is slick. And uh, I think the older Russians realize what's going on with uh, Putin and stuff. And actually, the people that probably get fooled the worst are probably um, the Western people and maybe the younger Russian people, too. You know, they might buy into it. I don't know. Not to say that these banksters on the Western side are good people, but the Russian leadership and the Western leadership are working together to screw over the people on both sides. That's what's going on. Now, um... I want to talk about Max Kaiser's uh, Silver Liberation Army. Uh, you know, it goes on to say, Crash J.P. Morgan, buy silver, buy silver. We are the Civil Liberation Army. We are the Legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us always. This is like a bunch of garbage, in my opinion. It's not, <laughs> you know, they're talking about, and they did these two declarations of war on bank banker occupation. First one, and you note the date, March 5th, 2011. Now, when did silver really bottom out last year in uh, 2011? More or less like, uh, i say the end of January 2011. Here about a month later, you know, the prices are heating up. And you're coming out with this stuff about, vary, you know, buy silver, buy silver, buy silver. And you notice all the comments on here to start March 7th, 2011. And basically, this thread ends right about April 28th when everything crashed. That's the end of it. That's the end of it. You know, I find that pretty coincidental. And then you have this second um, proclamation, communique, coming out the next day, March 6th, 2011. And, you know, they put the thing out there at their presentation. And you have your comments, you have the comments and the comments. And basically, they pretty much, that's it, you know, at the end of April. And, of course, silver crashed. And it's never really recovered. It's never really recovered. I really don't know what the hell Max Kaiser is talking about. Buy silver, crash J.P. Morgan. I don't see what the hell he's talking about at all. I mean, that, that has nothing to do with buying silver. Nothing. And I don't know what he's talking about when he's talking about it. the stock price of J.P. Morgan's stock price can't be... Um, Below, can't go below the price of silver because he says they are using the stock price, their stock price, to collateralize naked shorting silver. Well, if you're naked shorting anything, I mean, you're not having to put any money up, <laughs> right? So why the hell would you need anything to collateralize anything? And I don't know how the hell would they use the common stock to do this stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I got major suspicions with this guy. And, you know, 
I know he's. I know. I'm looking at something with Silver Futurist Jackie O. This was on. You know. I know he's not. Uh, he's a big pusher of the Silver Liberation Army. I don't know what his inside feelings are for that, or what his plan is, or what. But I just found it a little. I don't know. I got my antennas up on this deal. It's almost like you put a lot of effort into making videos and you make blogs and stuff like that. Um, it looks very innocent. Maybe it is, but I got my antennas up on this stuff because you know any rational person that actually knows, you know, I'm telling you flat out, people that know anything about. You know, the, the things that Max Kaiser says about J.P. Morgan, it's basically a bunch of entertainment. And about buying physical silver, you're going to crash J.P. Morgan. And about what their stock price has to be above the price of silver, the spot price of silver. Those are some really crazy ideas. And um, I don't know. I'm a little suspicious even of this. A little bit suspicious. I got my antennas up on all this stuff. Because it's like, you're playing, there's something not right with this. And, you know, I want to also point out that both David Morgan and Eric Sprott sold their silver on April, 20, um, April 28th, 2011, right at the height, which was Thursday. Now, I caught a piece of one of his interviews, and he was talking. I believe he said he got lucky, and he sold on April 28th. And my thought was, wow, that's pretty damn good luck. You know, and Eric Sprott sold a good chunk of his money then, and P and then they sold the rest. Sprott got it out of the rest of it back in when it was over forty bucks in the summer. So I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> I'm not trusting this whole deal. Now I found interesting. You know, Danny's on here from uh, Vision Victory. You know, interviewing him. I don't know. He's a, he's he's an aggressive marketer. That's what without, without a doubt. He probably. If I have this correct, I think he might have been in real estate when the height of it was going. I'm not sure, maybe. But he's a very aggressive salesperson, and he works hard. But I don't necessarily like listening to what he has to say, in my opinion. But I found out, um, you know, I saw this, and like, I don't have a very high opinion of division victory at all myself. That's just my opinion. But... Um, I saw the comment down here that was one of the highest, was the highest rated comment that, you know, he says it pains me to see David Morgan talk to Vision Victory. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, these type of people are the main people telling everybody what's going on in the markets with silver. Now, David Morgan, I know, I, I know he said he sold on April 28th. Well, you know what? If he did know something, um, you never, well... This guy, I don't have a bad opinion of at all, David Morgan. No, I don't. No, I don't. And he does not try to really tell anybody to go buy all physical silver. I think people say to buy all physical silver are freaking idiots. That's basically what I have to say about that. They're bad news. He does give, you know, he, the silver market's going to go up. It's a longer trend, and when it gets, it goes up hard, and it gets crashed down hard, and it has a long correction period. That's what David Morgan will say, basically. And it's a good advice. This guy, he's all right. Mike Maloney's okay. I don't know. I am really get annoyed with so many other people. Um, but... You know, I noticed, like I said, you know, Max Kaiser seemed to really be pushing this crash J.P. Morgan garbage right when Silver had that last super big push. If you notice that, I don't know. I mean, you could make something out of that or not. I'd say it's all coincidental. But uh, he talks about it down in here, <laughs> you know, to watch this other video. Um, this guy that made the comment about George for title and Peter. Sch now, actually, I never listened to George for title. You know, to tell you the truth, of all the popular guys, I never really listened. I, the only one I actually listened to was uh, Brother John F. for a while. And <laughs> I, I already got, I don't want to say too much bad, but I don't think people know what the hell they're doing, to tell you the truth. And um, they're just trying to make money off of YouTube or something. And I know there's been ac accusations that, you know, 
Google and YouTube are pushing scamsters and it's being controlled by the government. And it's not. God, I think it's the it's the people are looking for information that's um you know valid and stuff and they 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 love conspiracies. People love conspiracies. They love juicy stories. But um basically George for title was talking about the National Inflation Association. This actually is not totally screwed up, to tell you the truth, in my opinion. Although I don't trust I don't trust what they're saying now, but I think some of their some of their picks were actually good. Some of their picks were actually good. Generally speaking, they're pretty decent. But I, I know you know, I'm gonna post a link on this actually. It might be something very good to watch. <laughs> but somebody had a very high rated comment here. Basically, George is full of it. You know, he's talking about George for title. So I'm glad people are waking up. But it seems like it's the minority that are waking up and not the majority. So basically, I want to state that um, I'd be very careful about this Civil Liberation Army. I don't trust what's going on with this and the advice they're giving. Because they seem to actually come out with all this stuff. You know, when they're really pumping up their declaration on the war against the banksters. Like, buy physical silver, crash J.P. Morgan, and, you know, it happened right, you know, right at right at the time when silver was really taken off in its final blow-off bubble. And yet, you saw some of the big names sell at very good timing, right? Good luck. I mean, Eric Sprott sold at very good timing, April 28th, and so did David Morgan, right? So, I'm not saying this as an accusation, but I say that's freaking really good luck. So, keep your antennas up on this stuff. And, you know, I don't trust anything coming out of Russia today. I'd rather trust CNN or Fox or ABC or CBS or whatever the hell else there is out there than these guys. But I don't listen to any of that stuff, to tell you the truth. I strictly look at financial news. I don't give a damn about gossip or anything else like that. But um, be very careful as to what's going on. I'm very suspicious about everything now. And, um, you know, for the most part, the silver movement, even though silver is a very good investment, for the most part, the silver movement is snake oil. The guys on the top are basically telling, you know, all putting up all these conspiracy theories and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people repeating these stupid lies left and right. And it's not how it is. Silver's going to go up a great deal because of quantitative easing. When that's going to happen, God, I don't know. Because I thought it was going to happen in early 2012, and I was totally flat out wrong about that. But the market thought it was going to happen until early 2012. That's why silver went from 26 to 37. So, what I have to state, though, is that just, you know, hang on with the physical metals and stuff like that. But I would not pour 100% of money into silver. That is extremely stupid. And if you get some serious gains, start selling off. Start selling off. Now, I'm talking about people actually have a serious percentage of their money into silver. Now, if you only have, you know, 2% of your money into silver, I'd actually tell you to buy more. I think you should probably have a good 10% or more. You know, I got more than that, than that obviously. But, um... So when you're you're selling off, I mean, it's to me that's being pretty damn lopsided on the precious metals. If you're like over fifty percent in precious metals, like I am, you're pretty damn lopsided on it. I'm not a hundred percent, so I'm going to sell off some. I'm going to sell off some when I see some serious gains if I if they come about, and they probably will this year. But these people, when it starts heating up again, they're going to play the same old game keep the fires hot, well, certain people may be going to get lucky again and sell again. So, I don't know. I'm trying to be careful how I say this because I don't want to be accusatory that everything's being a big scam. But, man, I got my antennas up left and right on everybody in the whole crowd right now. And uh, I think I'm giving you a straight scoop on this stuff. So, you know, I know people will curse me out for saying, what are you going to do, take fiat? Well, 
God damn it. You know what I got to say to people like that? I'm not going to sell all silver. I'd sell a portion of it after you get a gain. If you get a double, the silver goes up to 60 or $70 an ounce. Why not sell some of it? You know, if you walk into a store today, you don't walk in there with silver, you know, ounces of minted coins and buy something and get a discount because it's priced in silver or something. They have a silver price and a fiat, U.S. fiat price. You get, it's everything's in U.S. dollars. So if that asset class starts moving up ahead, takes the fiat dollars, keep a reserve of some fiat dollars, and buy things you need. Pay your bills way ahead. I pay my bills way ahead as it is. I don't have any debt, too. You know, I've, I've been debt-free for 15 years. All right, and I got low bills and everything else. So actually, I'm in a situation that people want to be in. And they're trying to get into that situation. I don't have any more. I haven't had any anything, any kind of debt for 15 years or more. So, and, you know, nothing. So, you know, I'm actually kind of in a situation that people want to be in. So, what can I say, right? But I'm giving you good advice. And keep your antennas up on this stuff. I've been noticing such the there's like a solid minority inside the silver community that's waking up good. And that's what you want to do. If you want to freaking screw the banksters, you want to sell it to them high. You don't want them selling it to you high. You want to sell it to them high. Remember that.